Hi everyone and welcome back to our build channel. So as you can see what we have here in front of us is a NEMA 17 belt and pinion actuator. We're going to be going through a step by step build along video for this whole build which is definitely an awesome design here. A perfect example of our modular system utilizing our universal gantry plate to our motor mounting plate for our NEMA 17. Also on the other side here we're using T-nuts with 8mm screws to clamp down our belt on both sides here and in addition to that we have our configuration to where the belt runs perfectly aligned with our Delrin wheels this is a super efficient system perfect for any type of laser or a pick and place it's definitely a really cool design guys I'm looking forward to starting this build video with you so let's go ahead and get started Alright, so on this first step we are going to assemble our solid Delrin V-Wheel. So you're going to go ahead and locate your wheel kit and unload the contents and this is what you should see. Two of your open builds bearings, two of your precision shims, one of your nylon hex nuts, your Delrin V-Wheel shell. So in total we're going to have four wheels that we're going to be assembling. I'm going to show you the assembly process for one and then we'll do our additional wheels. So basically you're going to take a bearing, pop it in the front face here, Flip it around, put your precision shim in the middle, lock it in with your additional bearing, and that's one of your assembled wheels. So these additional parts we're going to carry over into our next step, but go ahead and assemble your other three wheels, and let's move on to the next step. Alright, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our universal gantry plate. So in this step we're going to go ahead and locate four of our 25 millimeter screws, two of our 6mm eccentric spacers, two of our 6mm aluminum spacers, four of our nylon hex nuts, and four of our precision shims that are going to be carried over with our wheel kits, and then four of our assembled Delrin V wheels. So to start off here guys, we're going to go ahead and take notice to our plate and where the hole spacings lie. So as you can see, we have four holes here that run across the end, and this is for the purpose of our modular system and how it works with the different sized rails. So you have 20 by 20, 20 by 40, 20 by 60, and 20 by 80. Since we're going to be using a 20 by 80 rail, we're going to locate the end holes here on each sides of the plate. So take your 25 millimeter screws and we're going to run them through each one of these holes. Then go ahead and rotate the plate around. I like to just seat it on its back that way we don't get any wiggle room here with our screws when we start our stack and configuration for our wheels. So now you can see that we have smaller holes here that are for our fixed wheel side which what I mean by fixed wheel is it's an aluminum spacer so it's not gonna rotate and tighten the wheel to the track unlike our eccentric side. So moving up forward here you can see that these holes are larger giving us space for our eccentric spacer to rotate and by rotating it causes preload preload is basically tightening your wheel to the track so if you can see that you have a wheel that is upright the eccentric essentially brings that wheel down to tighten to the track I'll show you here on our eccentric spacer this works as a cam and a cam has center hole here that allows for rotation and tightening and that's the purpose of this eccentric spacer. So this six millimeter stamp here indicates fully open and if you turn it all the way to the end it's going to be fully closed so that would be the tightest possible configuration for your eccentric. So we'll get into that a little bit more when we tighten these wheels to the rail because it seems to be um, an issue sometimes for people to really get the feel for how the eccentric tightens onto the rail. So I really want to make sure that you guys grasp that. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with our fixed wheel side first. So those are the wheels that are not going to be rotating. So go ahead and take a 6mm aluminum spacer and place it on each one of your screws. And then followed by that, our precision shim. And then on top of that, we're going to go ahead and put our Delrin wheels. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our eccentric side. So, as I was discussing before, the fully open position of the eccentric is where the 6mm stamp is. You can mark it with a permanent marker if you need to. Uh, generally I can see that 6mm stamp. The marker would just be for identifying where the location is. So, this is going to be facing away from our fixed wheels. 
that way we can slide it on our track and then we can add preload or tighten this eccentric so make sure that you have that facing away from your fixed wheels and that lip should slide into the hole here so it should be a flush mount same thing with our other eccentric and if you need to wiggle it you can just uh, adjust the eccentric and it should snap into place but make sure that they're actually seated into the holes here so let's go ahead and add our precision shims next and then our solid V wheels and what I just did there is I had a precision shim here in the middle of the wheel that was um, kind of crooked in the center you can either use your ball driver and adjust that or just spin it around on the screw like I just did and it should find the center of gravity just like so let's go ahead and put our other wheel on and then what I like to do is cap these with my nylon hex nuts so just go ahead and thread those into place that way when we tilt this to the side our configuration doesn't fall all over the table alright so let's go ahead and tighten that down guys alright so that looks excellent um, one thing I will say is make sure that your eccentrics are fully open so if they're not we're going to adjust that and you can see why sometimes I will mark it with a permanent marker especially for a machine build just because it gets kind of hard to see that six millimeter stamp but you can see that these are fully open so that's exactly what we want they're facing away from our fixed wheels so we're at a fully open position so that looks excellent guys let's go ahead and move on to the next step alright so moving on to the next step we are going to be assembling our NEMA 17 motor to our motor mounting plate to our universal gantry plate. So in this step we're going to go ahead and locate our NEMA 17 motor mounting plate, four of our M3 8mm screws, two of our 8mm screws which are M5, one of our GT2 20 tooth timing pulleys, one of our double T-nuts, and uh, our assembly that we have thus far. Our tooling for this is going to be our ball driver set and let's go ahead and get started. So to start this off guys I'm going to go ahead and mount our motor mounting plate to our universal gantry plate. So in order to do this we're simply going to align the plate to these holes. So just kind of follow suit with what I do. These three holes are going to align with uh, basically the third line down here and we're going to run those screws through these two holes. So grab your M5 8mm screws and let's place those through the holes on our plate. Alright, and then after doing that we're going to go ahead and align our double T-nut. And I just do this from the back end of the plate and I hold it with my fingers, grab my M5 ball driver, I'm just going to tighten this down. And you want to make sure that it's completely straight. So if you need to loosen one screw and adjust the position, uh, go ahead and do so and make sure that these are completely tight into that double T-nut. We don't want any movement on this plate. So really get a nice good lock on that double T-nut. Alright, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and set that to the side and we'll move on to our motor. So first I would like to go ahead and strap on this GT2 22 timing pulley to our motor shaft. So on the motor shaft you'll see that we have a flat portion here and that's for the set screw to lock on to a, a fixed position. If the set screw were to lock on to the rounded position of the motor shaft, it would be slipping so you wouldn't have a completely rigid system with your belt and pinion system. So let's make sure that it's on the flat portion of the shaft here. So we're going to go ahead and align our set screw to the shaft here. And I like to leave a little room between the end of the motor, obviously, and the end of the shaft. So I like to keep mine right about here. And that might adjust later on, depending on where my belt lies, but that should be perfect right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that set screw into place. And then let's go ahead and lock in the other side. All right, that looks excellent. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our motor, and we're gonna place it through our motor mounting plate, just like so. And you'll see on the opposite end, we have holes to mount this, that's where our M3 8mm screws come into play. So let's go ahead and mount that into place. First I want to show you that I have my my wire adapter hanging down. So 
I mean, you can do it in any position that you like. Um, for me, I like that wire to be hanging down so I can actually organize it better with whatever system I'm using this on. So I would keep it in this position and let's go ahead and lock that motor into place. All right, excellent guys. So now that we have that assembled, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. All right guys, so in this step, we are going to be adjusting our eccentrics to our 20 by 80 V-slot rail. We're also gonna be attaching our belt to the V-slot as well. So let's go ahead and locate two of our M5 T-nuts, two of our M5 eight millimeter screws, our GT2 timing belt, and of course our 20 by 80 V-slot rail. So let's go ahead and get started. First by adjusting our centrics to the rail. We are going to slide on our universal gantry plate. And as you can see, we have a lot of play here in the plate and that is because our centrics are not tightened down to the rail. And that means preload has not been added to the rail. So, our centrics are here on the bottom and that is exactly how you want your configuration because once the eccentrics lock in from the bottom you're going to have a much more rigid system versus having the eccentrics on top so if you followed along with this uh, video correctly you should have your motor on top of your universal gantry plate if not readjust that make sure that your eccentrics are on the bottom alright so let's go ahead and continue I also want to show you that the wheels you can basically spin freely it might be touching the rail a little bit, but it's not where it needs to be. So if you can flick your wheels like that, you know that your wheels are too loose. So you need to add preload to the rail. So let's go ahead and work our way to the bottom. Here's our eccentrics. So I'm going to rotate these in the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate them to the right. To where my 6 millimeter sign is 90 degrees from the starting point. I'm going to do the same thing for our opposite wheel here. And now I'm going to test the wheels and see if they're tight or loose. Oh man, see that's really nice. See I'm getting a little roll here. So it's not too tight. If you can't move that wheel at all, like it's just trying to move the plate, you know it's too tight. But if you're getting that kind of roll, so basically a little resistance, you know it's on the rail that's exactly what you want so let's move on to the front side here oh, yeah see that's too loose I'm spinning it freely no problems so we're gonna have to reevaluate this eccentric so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that perfect so now I've got resistance here but not too much I can tell that my preload is right so a lot of this is feel so you want to get a feel for how the eccentrics are supposed to sit on your plate but essentially you don't want any movement in your plate so I don't have any diagonal movement, I don't have any front and back movement that's completely on the rail, if you have any type of movement keep adjusting that eccentric and you'll find that the preload has to be set perfectly so that's a big deal, make sure that you have your eccentrics adjusted correctly so let's go ahead and see how that moves on the rail man that looks great super nice system that we have here guys alright so let's go ahead and move on here so taking our GT2 timing belt I'm gonna go ahead and run this through the top track of our 20 by 80 rail so I'm gonna run it all the way through past my wheels and then I'm gonna create a tent here in the middle that's gonna latch onto my pulley so let's just keep running that through I wanna make sure that we have an even amount of slack on each side so this is my slack on the right side and this is my slack on the left side so it's pretty much even so now what I'm going to do is pinch here on each side of the wheels and I'm going to create that tent and then I'm going to grab it with my finger and wrap it around the timing pulley just like so alright 
And don't, don't worry about the tension yet. We're about to get to that now. So go ahead and grab one of your M5 T-nuts. And let's place that into the track here. And then we're going to grab one of our M5 8mm screws. And we're going to make sure that this is tightened against the belt. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want it tight to where it's going to hold this belt into place. Otherwise, this whole system isn't going to work right. So just like so. As you can see, it's kind of turned. That's fine. I'm going to pull the slack out of the other end of this system. So from this end, I'm going to pull it completely tight. And what I'm going to do is hold it while I put the M5 T-nut right on top here. And then I'm going to tighten that down with my 8mm screw. Make sure that's nice and tight. And what I do with the excess is I just tuck it into the track here. And there you go guys. Now you have a NEMA 17 belt and pinion actuator. This thing is awesome. It's perfect for any type of laser, pick and place. It's a super efficient system. Definitely a good example of how our modular system works. So as you can see our universal gantry plate added to our motor mounting plate here gives us this configuration. This thing is awesome guys. Alright, so hope this helps guys and I look forward to seeing you guys on the forum and uh, continue to subscribe to our channel and check out our future builds. We're constantly innovating and coming up with new ideas guys so definitely uh, stay in touch and good luck on all your future builds.